high school, each year we were given entree options for our football banquet, and they were always exceptional. Not your everyday PBJ, deli slices, or a scoop of tuna fish over lettuce. It wasn't fried chicken with rice and gravy and peas. It wasn't pork chops, okra, or a good mess of turnip greens. You can tell, I guess, that I'm from the South. No, the banquet options were extraordinarily special. Chicken cordon bleu, roast beef, tenderloin smothered in its own juices. For your sides, you could choose something like yam casserole, baked potato, slightly crisp snap peas, carrots, and well, you get the idea. When it comes to what we're calling the feast of God's favor, grace, there are no options. God only offers us one entree and He has handpicked the side items that go with it. I want you to think with me about the main dish on God's banquet table of grace and the side items that go with it. The meal has been planned, prepared, and it's steaming hot ready. We just need to have an appetite and the desire to accept God's invitation to come to the feast of His favor. Remember the beatitude, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Matthew 5, 6. Are you hungry? Thirsty? Do you really want to be right with God, righteous? Then think with me about the feast that makes God's favor possible. Let's start by looking at the main dish of this meal. It's not a rack of ribs right off the grill. It's not a double-decker hamburger with tomato and onions or tacos or chicken spaghetti. The one and only main dish in the Feast of God's favor is a relationship with Jesus Christ our Lord. And folks, that ought to be enough. Have you ever taken the time to let your mind soak up the wonder of one called Jesus? Just listen to those closest to the Lord. What every member of the Godhead said. God the Father said, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Matthew 3, 17. God the Holy Spirit spoke through Peter and said, God has made Jesus both Lord and Christ. Acts 2, 36. He's the Son of God. He was made Lord and Christ by God. Jesus is the divine Master and Messiah of all mankind, and God's grace offers us a relationship with Him. That's just amazing. Listen to those who worked around Jesus. For example, there's his kinsman and co-worker, John the Baptizer. He said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, John 1, 29. Our Lord's apostles were just as expressive. Andrew said of Jesus, We have found the Messiah, John 1, 41. Philip said, We have found the one that Moses and all the prophets wrote about, John 1, 45. Nathaniel, probably Bartholomew, was a little more skeptical at first, but he ended up being the most dramatic in his description of Jesus. Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. John 1, 49. Listen to what Jesus said Himself. I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. John 6, 35. He's the secret to ultimate satisfaction. I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, he said, John 8, 12. He gives us direction for daily living. I'm the door of the sheep. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep, John 10, 7 to 11. He offers us the protection of his wise care. I'm the resurrection and the life, he said. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live, John eleven twenty five. 25. He gives us the hope of a bodily resurrection. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. He provides us with a connection to God. Ah, the wonder of one called Jesus. And we get to enjoy a special relationship with Him if we are blessed to sit at the table of God's grace. There are a multitude of blessings or side items that garnish this fellowship. Here are just three, all found in the New Testament book of Hebrews. 
First, with Jesus, we have someone in heaven that can talk to God about our temptations. Hebrews 2.19, For in that He Himself, Jesus, has suffered being tempted, He is able to aid those who are tempted. How about that? When the devil tries to seduce us away from God with our own desires, Jesus understands and can solicit God's help. I know what that's like. Let's not let that go any further. That's just mighty encouraging to me. Second, with Jesus, we have someone in heaven that can talk to God about our troubles. Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. We have a great high priest, don't miss that word great, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. And He sympathizes with us and invites us to come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Third, with Jesus, we have someone in heaven that can talk to God about our transgressions. Hebrews 9, 24, Christ has entered into heaven itself, watch, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. That's in the chapter that talks about blood, the blood of Jesus and forgiveness more than any other chapter in the New Testament. When we need forgiveness, the one who died to make our forgiveness possible. The one who's, who has scars in his hands, in his feet, in his side, is sitting right next to God's side, helping us, keeping us in God's favor. When we come to the banquet table of God's grace, we find a wonderful relationship with Jesus. And with Jesus, we have an advocate with the Father. 1 John 2, verse 1. We have someone ready and willing to talk to God about our struggles, our sadness, and our sin. There's just no one like Jesus, and no life compares to a life with Jesus. It's the one that allows us to quote our memory verse, 1 Corinthians 15, 10, and say with Paul, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And when you sit down and really think about what all that involves, well, it's just simply incredible.